Sub-Saharan African landscapes are iconic for their large charismatic herbivores and the powerful killers that prey on them. Lions, leopards and hyenas compete for their meals in the savanna and have done so for millions of years. But these carnivorans are still the new guard as far as African predators are concerned. Go back a while and a primitive order of predators filled this role. Spanning a run of around 55 million years, hyenodontids filled most of the niches and these hypercarnivorous predators were immensely successful, ranging in size from petite to truly frightening. The largest of this order, a genus called Megistotherium, may even hold the title of the largest mammalian land hypercarnivore ever. In this video, we're going to look at the rise of the hyenodonts as a whole, how Megistotherium represents one of their peak performers, and how its specialisms would ultimately lead to its decline. And we'll finish up with who took over the role of apex African predator in its absence. To start with though, let's understand the greatest beast of bone crushers through the lens of the order as a whole. Before cats, dogs, bears, and mustelids, there were creodonts. Creodonts were once considered to be a single order, but they've since been split, and this division is essentially between the shorter-faced and less successful Oxyanodonta and the enormous-headed Hyenodonta of which Megistotherium was a member. The name hyenodont means hyena-toothed, and a lot of its members likely filled similar niches to the more predatory of the hyena species we have around today, but these were by no means hyenas. They were a completely different lineage, and they had multiple other stark differences too, and we'll come to those shortly. Not long after the dinosaurs snuffed it, small mammalian interlopers radiated out into all the newly vacated spaces. There's still a debate around where this group originated with the early hyenodonts showing up both in Africa and Asia. Regardless though, Europe, Asia, Africa and North America were quickly populated by members of the hyenodonta order. Though most of these remained pretty small by modern carnivore standards, at least for quite a long time. The best known and type genus hyenodon was one of the earliest around, and it's certainly one of the earliest large mammalian predators of its kind, with at least one species, Hyenodon gigas, reaching up to around 1.4 meters tall and 3 meters long, possibly weighing around 330 kilograms. But this was an exception rather than the rule, and the vast majority of these predators were a lot smaller. As their name suggests though, their powerful skulls were filled with meat slicing teeth. And they actually had more of them than the carnivorans do now, and that would prove to become significant, so we'll come back to that later. One thing that is particularly interesting about the shape of the hyenodonts is that they presented with a much more modern profile than we typically consider mammals to have had back then. The reason hyenas look so much more prehistoric than their feline counterparts in Africa is that they sport the old school sloping back of the more ancient Pleistocene predators. Saber-toothed tigers and other similar carnivorans from the Pleistocene had this sort of shuffling ancient look too. And it was only quite recently that carnivorans like dogs and cats became more parallel to the ground and outcompeted their wonkier counterparts. Looking at animals like Smilodon, for example, the immensely powerful forelimbs would have been used in a grab and tackle strategy to bring down large prey that had been ambushed. This strategy sacrifices the ability to pursue anything of meaningful agility, and so only works really well for predators that use short bursts of speed and combine that with strength to bring down large animals. The prey of animals like Smilodon likely evolved to run better in response to this, Take horses, for example, once four-fingered woodland creatures, their feet over time combined into a single clump of highly specialized toe, and that's now exceptional for running. And so horses became harder to ambush, and animals better equipped for chasing them became their top predators instead, animals like wolves and lions. Hyenas somehow escaped this update. Not all of them, of course, as they were once widespread in Europe and America as well, but at least in Africa, their social intelligence, adaptable nature, and readiness to both scavenge and hunt has allowed them to thrive where other predators like them didn't. But back to hyena dunts. Despite being far more primitive than hyenas by tens of millions of years, they too had a body plan more aligned with modern carnivorans than their namesakes, and therefore this would have reflected their hunting strategy. Throughout the fossil history of this order, we do see evolution of hyenodont feet, reflecting this arms race from a plantigrade basal morphology towards a more digitigrade or toe-walking morphology later on. 
Cursorial pursuit predators, then. Hyenodonts in Africa would still have dealt with more forested ecosystems than there are there today, as the continent was much wetter than it is now. And during the Oligocene, they would have been the top predators all over the continent, and indeed all over most of the world. The two described families are the globally distributed Hyenodontidae and the predominantly African Hyenoloridae. Megistotherium was a member of the latter. Hyenodonts were extraordinarily diverse, even branching out into semi-aquatic niches. Some evidence even points to members of the Hyenodon genus being able to climb trees too. And the order as a whole spanned more than 50 million years from beginning to end. But this reign wouldn't last forever. By the early Eocene, other groups of predators had also emerged, including the hooved wolves known as mesonycids, and the bear dog-like arctocyanids. But by the Oligocene, both of these lines were proved to have failed in their evolutionary experiments. One group that did pass through into the Oligocene was the carnivorans, who by that time had produced dog bears, bone-crushing canids, and a rapidly diversifying group of feliforms. These predators began to be a problem for the long-reigning hyenodonts in most of the world, but African predators remained blissfully unaware of their existence for a lot longer, being isolated from the brunt of the carnivoran invasion until all the way into the Miocene. So hyenodonts kept their position as top predators in Africa for far longer than they did elsewhere. And as the Oligocene epoch put a cap on the Paleogene period and ushered in the Miocene, Climate change was driving a turning point in biodiversity almost everywhere on Earth, and African hyenodonts were adapting accordingly. By the latter part of the Oligocene, Africa had already had a monster hyenodont. Simba Kubwa Kutoka Africa, discovered in Kenya fairly recently, was a mysterious example with weight estimates ranging from 500 to 1500 kilograms, but a monstrous animal nonetheless. Rhinos and elephants were present on the continent by this time, so they would have been on the menu for Simba Kubwa. But things were getting tougher in Africa, even in the absence of carnivorans, and the predators were being forced into more and more specialized niches as a result. One of these specialisms was gigantism, and for as large as Simba Kubwa was, there was at least one genus that was probably even bigger. Megistotherium is the largest of the hyenodonts known so far, but both of these two represent the final stage of the order's reign over the planet. And what a finale. Megistotherium was perhaps the largest hypercarnivorous land mammal ever. But there's a lot of qualifiers in that sentence, so let's break it down. Megistotherium was a member of one of the earliest carnivorous orders of mammals to thrive after the dinosaur extinction. As hyenodonts, they were mammals by every modern standard. Placentals, who would have given birth to live young and nurtured their offspring. They were hyper-carnivorous, which meant that they got the vast majority of their food in the form of meat, and judging from their teeth, these were also actually bone crushers, and they were the largest animals on land to fit all of these categories ever. At around a ton in weight, they were not the largest mammals to eat other mammals. Killer whales blow them out of the water even today, and there were far larger raptorial sperm whales to deal with in the water at the same time as Megistotherium patrolled the land. They weren't even the largest predator, as there would be bears like Arctotherium still to come that might have been both bigger and heavier than Megistotherium, but bears like this weren't likely to have been hypercarnivores, and would have received a lot of their food from other sources than meat. So all of these qualifiers essentially boil down to, for mammals who lived on land and only knew killing, this was their biggest champion. And this is supported by the very name Megistotherium, which itself translates to the greatest beast. The one species known, Megistotherium osteothlastus, has the enviable title of the greatest beast that crushes bone, and as some of the most specialized of the hyenodonts, this was another adaptation that made the animal even more intimidating. So let's take a look at this species in particular. Megistotherium was a genus of enormous mammalian predators, with only one species described so far as mentioned, Megistotherium osteothlastus. And what a bone crusher. Like all hyenodonts, it had a disproportionately large skull, which reached up to around 66 centimeters long, and estimates of its weight typically fall within the 600 to 800 kilo range. But some exceptional and perhaps slightly overly optimistic estimates suggest it could have weighed up to three tons. Inside that bulky skull were multiple self-sharpening carnassial teeth for slicing through meat, 
and it was the regression analysis on these teeth that led to the extreme estimates of size. But with little else to go on, these are probably grotesquely overblown. Still, it's what's in front of those teeth that gives this species its name. Unlike many of its kind, Osteothlastus had premolars set up for bone crushing, and it was perhaps this adaptation that also helped it outlast many of its order. In the face of changing environments and the rampaging generation of carnivorans taking over their ecosystems, Megistotherium occupied what is now Sahara Desert, but at the time it was lush and green in comparison during the Miocene, and as we mentioned it would have been a cursorial predator, meaning that it could run well and chase down prey, and remains of the weird elephant gomphotheries found alongside Megistotherium suggest that the powerful head and bone-crushing jaws were likely to have been used on the legs of enormous animals like this that it hunted for food. Being the largest of its kind, it would likely have specialized on the largest of the prey animals, and perhaps also scavenged meat and bone from other predators. But it would be this strict specialism around pure carnivory that would become the weakness for Megistotherium and for hyenodonts worldwide. As promised, we're about to go into how that played out, and which enormous mammal would take over as Africa's Miocene monster. But it's that time again to thank you all for giving us your attention, and gently nudge you in the direction of the like button to help others find this video too. And if you haven't already, please subscribe so that we can get more of them on board as well. So the up-and-coming carnivorans had somewhat less specialized teeth, with only a single set of carnassials and some more generalized molars that could get a lot more done. In the face of rapid climate changes, the hyenodont lion, having spent 50 million years becoming more specialized, found itself unable to adapt as quickly as the more generalized predators took over. Carnivorans would finally make their way into Africa, occupying many of the niches of the smaller hyenodonts and gradually working their way up to replace the largest of them too. The largest, of course, being the resilient Megistotherium. It's possible that Megistotherium held out as one of the longest lasting of its kind simply because it was so enormous, but ultimately its slow reproductive cycle, potentially less complex social behavior and highly specialized feeding strategy would become no match for the competitive carnivorans, evolving larger, faster, and smarter in its presence. Combined with the loss of forests and the general trend of aridification in the region, the 10 million year reign of Megistotherium came to an end as the era of bear dog dominance began. And this group of carnivorans that gets little attention is the Amphicyonidae family of so-called bear dogs. As the hyenodonts faded away, it was this group of killers that would take over many of the apex predator niches, and with a mixture of bear and dog features, they would have been a serious force to contend with. And luckily we have a video on their rise and fall right here on the channel, so please check that one out next. As for this one, that's all for now, and thanks again for watching.